Hello, today I'm going to show you a Fremencia workout on Valve and Valve Tower. Here we have a main screen already, ready to segment the base of the analyst. And I'll tell you that based on the previous knowledge, this is a Carponte Edwards Paramount 2800 or Magna Valve. And so the way we start with this is this is one of the best fluoroscopic signature valves out there. And the easiest way is to get the open red circle line up with one of the commercial poles and that on the top left panel, put a dot at the base of the surgical valve. And you do the same thing, rotating it to the right sinus and then the non-sinus, similar to what you do with the native aortic valve analysis. So now you can see that I'm at the base of the surgical valve. Now I have to fine tune the assessment so you can see that I want to be at the center of the rim and at the base of the rim so that you can get the proper height. So that looks pretty good on yellow dots. I'm gonna go to the green dot now, center it, go down to the base, do the same thing now at the red with the red dot and go to the base as well. Now, if the valve is symmetric, you should be 180, 120 degrees apart from each other, the dots. But in reality, sometimes these valves get distorted. Uh, they might be canted from, from the aortic root. So you might not be exactly at the bottom and might not be symmetric. So now we have to make sure this is a center line. Now, because it's valve in valve tab or sometimes a surgical valve may be canted. Uh, so rather than doing the center line, completely all the way to the ascending aorta, I just do a center line to the surgical valve portion only and up to the sinotubular junction. So you can see here, I'm a little bit off with my dot because your three dots should be equal distance and disappear at the same time. So you can see now that's pretty good. And then same thing for the LBOT, you want to keep it relatively straight. So once you're satisfied with this uh, measurement, then you click confirm. and then you can trace the annulus. Now it's important that you drop the gain of this when, before you start measuring because often the surgical valve frame will have artifact or booming. So you, if you have booming, you can artificially underestimate or make the annular area smaller than it really is because you have the booming in place. So now you can see that here, I'm trying to make this into a circle as much as possible. Remember, the surgical valve is a circular object unlike the annulus, which is more elliptical. So you want to be as circular as possible. And you can see that here, pretty good based on the measurements here. So roughly you can see it's a 23 millimeters surgical valve and the inner diameter is around 22, which is what you expect for this particular surgical valve. So I'm gonna save this as an analyst and I'm gonna save the screenshot. I'm gonna next measure the LBOT. Now the LBOT is less relevant in standard surgical valves because you rarely interact with the LBOT. However, in patients with a homograph or a stainless aortic valve replacement, you need to measure the LBOT as well because it has relevance to the interaction with the LBOT and the sizing. So I take the LBOT here. Now, if you think I'm moving too fast, uh, you can certainly go back to my previous video to learn more about in detail analysis of how to do some of these measurements, but just in the interest of time, I'm gonna do this in a relatively quick manner. You can see now I rotated the red open circle facing the left main. This is about the STJ. So I'm gonna right click and get the sinus height. And I'm gonna click here with the ruler times two to get the sound of the junction dimensions. You can hear it's very generous in this particular anatomy. Now the left main height is just right here and often it's low. You can see that here is only 8.2 and sometimes even be less than that because this is a super annular valve mounted above the annulus. So most of the time you can imagine the 
left main will be lower than the surgical valve. And so that's what you see here. And then I'm gonna also go up there and right click to measure from basal plane to get the left sinus height. In terms of the sinus well, salva, you can see that here, I'm gonna divide this by two. Sometimes it's very hard to see, especially a patient with a, a, a tube graft that was re replacing a sending aorta and aortic root. So if you not be able to see the sign of Valsalva very well because there's no sign, no aortic root present, but I'm gonna label these in terms of the right and then the left. And also remember the aortic root's a little bit distorted as well. So sometimes it might not be as symmetric as like, let's say like a aortic, native aortic anatomy. But your bottom line is that you're gonna see Come show post here, you just put a line across that to the opposite side and try to make it as symmetric as possible. Next, I'm gonna to go to the top of the surgical valve. This is roughly 16 here. And then what I do is I do a core custom length measurement. What I do is I'm gonna bring it down to the bottom, right back to the annulus. And this is kind of the height of the surgical valve. Now with bovine pericardial valve, uh, such as this one or mitral flow or trifecta, the top of the stent frame is going to be roughly where the top of the surgical valve leaflet will sit. But if it's a porcine valve like the Hancock II or the mosaic, uh, you, or the, even the epic of bio core, you're going to be lower than the top. So, but even then, we would still go for the top of the surgical valve frame as being the most conservative measure from terms of coronary obstruction risk. So I'm going to do that the same thing on this side. And what I'm trying to do is I'm going to create a box as if the valve becomes like a tube graph so that we can assess the coronary obstruction risk. And I'm going to measure, do a measurement and distance. And here I'm going to draw the internal diameter of the surgical valve. In this case, it's 22. Now, having said that, if you use a balloon expander valve in here, you can actually stretch the leaflet further than 22. You can maybe even go into 23 or 24. So you might need to be more conservative even and, and draw a bigger box a wider box rather to account for the coronary obstruction risk. Now you can see this very well here, what the coronary obstruction risk is. You can look at this here and you want diastolic flow into the coronary here during diastole because that's the top of the valve. And after you implant the new transcaptor valve, that's gonna be a complete tube graft being sealed off. So this distance is called a virtual valve to coronary or virtual valve to sinotubular junction distance, depending on where the coronary sits. If the coronary sits above this plane, this risk plane, then there's no issue with coronary obstruction. You don't even need to measure this VTC or VTSDJ because the coronary is above it. But if the coronary is halfway below or even below this, then you need to measure this distance so that you can assess the coronary obstruction risk. So next, I'm going to, before I do that though, I want to create a circle here on the axial view on this top left with a 22 millimeter circle to determine the tube graph dimension. So I'm gonna start doing this. And go up. So you can see it's a very calcified prosthetic valve. I usually go up at least 10 millimeters, but I'll show you the additional measurements with valve in valve that you need to perform in, in terms of coronary obstruction risk. Okay, so now I'm gonna go, go up to the top of the surgical valve. So here, what you're trying to look at is the diastolic flow around the space here in the area outside this blue circle. So whatever the distance here is gonna be valve to right corner distance and valve to left main distance because right now I line up with the left main. So what you do is you right measure distance and then you try to measure the valve frame to the edge of the STJ or the coronary, whichever it is. So in my case here, I'm gonna measure, and these should roughly match. And then also sometimes if I look at this just quickly to, for your illustration, 
you can see in this particular the top of the surgical valve does line up with the sinuses here and the STJ here. But if the right coronary, for example, is higher, you will be less concerned. Uh, or if the right coronary just comes across, you're gonna have to measure the distance here uh, and rather than above it. So in this particular case, you need to measure here. That's this, to this right sinus, but also I'm gonna do a custom measurement. Like the other side will line up here. And the reason for doing this is that in this particular case, I want to measure the distance to the right coronary because it's not common for the right coronary to have obstruction, but you certainly don't want that to happen. So now again, this is a conserved estimate because the valve frame may actually restrict the transcapital valve extension. So you might actually have more room than you think. But you know, just for the calculation purposes, you want to line up this to each other. And then also remember this circle may not match completely to this box. So again, there's a, some potential measurement errors, but still this is kind of the best case scenario right now that we can do with this kind of methodology. And also you can see this one as a little bit artifact as well in terms of the delineation of the aorta. So you can see that here. So VT STJ is 3.8 facing the left vein and 3.6 to the right. Now remember there are sinuses that you can actually go down there and still perfuse the coronary, but this is just a most conservative estimate of this. And so what I'd like to do here is let's get the STJ dimension measured and saved and do the sinus of Saba here with the surgical valve in place. And then now I'm gonna do the VT STJ on both the right coronary and the left corner. So VTSTJ of left main of CA. Okay, so I'm going to do then continue the rest of my workout. This is the left main view. <clears throat> and this is the 3.8 that I was showing earlier. Now, based on the Vivic data, you know, anything less than four millimeters, this distance considered moderate or high, or high risk for coronary obstruction. But you can see that here it should be pretty safe because I'm just putting the right coronary height here. You can see how this is measured. Certainly less than two would be very ominous. And of course, I mentioned before, if it's a balloon expandable valve, it's going to be maybe smaller because the valve might, leaflet might flare outward by the balloon expansion. But also if you plan to do balloon valve fracture, balloon remodeling, this distance will be decreased because now you have a fracture and it can be unpredictable. So you cannot say that, well, I'm going to fracture and then it's only going to go non-sinus and not the left sinus. There's just no way to predict that. So you got to be extra careful if you plan to fracture or remodel the surgical valve with this uh, measurements here. So this can be potentially uh, bigger than you think or, and, and actually sm likely smaller than you realize. So next, I'm going to go into this view now, which is the ascending aorta view. You can see there was a lot of booming artifact here, right? So I need to kind of drop the gain by just using the right mouse button to reduce that. And you can see that here, there's really no ascending aorta calcification in this patient. And then I'm going to go to the hockey puck view. Same thing, you can see very calcified for Let's just look at the symmetry of the frame. You know, is it a circular frame? Is it deformed? Uh, sometimes, remember, it is it can be deformed. Now, in terms of fluoroscopic angle, it's very easy in valve in valve. You know, you can put the CM over the green dot, but remember, you might not be at the true bottom center of each face of the surgical valve. So what you do is just basically look at the surgical valve on the flow signature and then determine that on at the time of the procedure. But if you want to do a CT prediction, this is the angle. 
the root angle, but if you look at the top right, see, I just bisect this. This might not be at the center, but that's okay. This looks symmetric, so this will be the coplanar view. We can mark that. This is the LAO view. Now, this is a key view. This is what you need to do at the time of the corner and geography. For example, you want to roll up corner obstruction risk. What you do is you basically have this view called one, two view because you have two poles overlapping each other, usually LAO cranial, as you've seen here, and then do a semi selective shore shot, and then you can look at the coronary flow. So even though the CT may look ominous on of coronary obstruction, if this angiogram looks favorable, you'll be more likely to be able to proceed uh, maybe without leaflet management like basilica or uh, coronary protection. And you, of course, need to look at the other side. So I'm going to do a cuss overlap view as well, basically RAO view. So two ones or two commercial posts on this side. Now remember, when you actually implant the valve during the procedure, it might not be any of these three views, it'll be somewhere in between kind of like this <clears throat> or like this, where you have no parallax with the surgical valve, but also no parallax with the transcaptor valve, particularly with the uh, self-expanding valve platform. You want to take the info parallax out. So just keep that in mind. Okay, so let's take a look at the report. You can see this is a standard report that we do for valve and valve pretty much similar to a native valve. You can see the surgical valve frame at one millimeter cuts. STJ, sinus or salva. You can see this is the virtual STJ to left main. I usually put at the bottom just to keep the format consistent. You might need more than one measurements here. In some cases, especially if the root is small and you're concerned, you can see the fluoroscopic view here. You can save this PDF now and share it with your heart team. And of course you can save your sessions to any format you like. So here is the valve and valve workup. And next time I'm going to show you another surgical valve for uh, valve and valve workup as well, because each surgical valve is a bit different. Hope you find this useful and see you next time.